Hey everybody, so uh, today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to actually do a video blog because I was about to dye up some of my locks today because I'm going to be spinning an art yarn, doing some lock spinning, and I thought I would include you in that. Um, these are Border Lester locks that I got from Ashley Martineau at Nouveau Fiber Arts. Um, She's got great things in her shop. I will post a link for that. Um, and I pulled them apart just a little bit. I don't want to do too much because I don't want them fluffed up. That takes away from the really pretty curliness of the locks. They're, I don't know if you can see from there, they're pretty curly. They're natural just from the sheep. They're gorgeous. They're going to spin up into a really, really pretty novelty yarn that I will then make into a scarf or maybe the fringe of a purse or something. I don't know. Um, so the first step with any dyeing of a natural protein-based fiber like wool is to start it with an acid bath. Now this is just warm water with vinegar poured in. Um, don't know the exact quantities. I did a good glug of vinegar into the water. And you really want that to be all over the wool and you want to just gently press the wool in and get it to soak up all that water. You don't want to juice it around too much because you don't want it to felt. You just want it to be saturated. So I'm going to leave that to soak up and I will be back when it's ready to add the dyes to. Okay, so uh, that has been sitting now for about 10 minutes and it has soaked up most of the water. There's just a little bit floating around in there. And I'm now going to add in some dye. Now this is just standard food coloring. Um, this works really well with any protein-based fiber like wool. Uh, it wouldn't work on cotton or any vegetable-based fiber or an acrylic blend. Um, now this is just blue. Now, do whatever colors you want. This is just what I'm doing because I want some blue locks. Now I've got some blue food coloring here mixed with water because I want it to be a little bit paler. And I'm just gonna, no method to my madness, gonna drip some in all over. nice. If you don't juice it around, you're going to get a really pretty mottled effect. And I've got a little bit of kind of purpley dark blue here. And I'm going to go ahead and put just a couple of dots of green, just to add some variety. And it's okay to have some white left in there. I don't mind that. Like I said, it goes for really nice marbled, mottled effect. If you want it to be more uniform, by all means, experiment. And I'm going to go ahead and put this into the microwave now, just for a couple of minutes. I'm going to get it just about to the boiling point, but not quite. Um, so whatever that means for your microwave, get it close to the boiling point, but don't boil it, because we don't want to felt it. Okay, so it was just come into the microwave, and I would actually usually leave it in there to cool for the entire time, but I just wanted you to see that the colors have now all spread out, and they've kind of mixed a little bit, uh, blended together, but still are very distinct in and of themselves. You can see there's some steam coming off, but it was not boiling. I did not want to end up with matted or felted fiber. Um, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and let that completely cool and once the water in there is clear, right now it's not clear and it's a bit warm, um, 
Once it's clear, it means that all of the dye would have been soaked up into the fiber and then I can go ahead and rinse it. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that this has soaked up all the dye it's going to and it is now ready to be rinsed. Now if you take a look here at the water, you can see it's nowhere near as dark. There's still some blue in there, but there was a lot of blue to start with. So it's pretty much sopped up as much as it's going to. So I'm going to go ahead and start rinsing this. Okay, so I have poured off the liquid. And you're going to want to just gently wring out any excess. Sorry, gently squeeze out. You don't want to wring it out because you don't want to mat your fibers at all. Okay. Remove that. And I'm just going to grab a bowl with some nice clear clean water. And you're going to want to go ahead and put your locks into that bowl. Just give it a nice little rinse. You never want to rinse under flowing water or running water because you really don't want to have any agitation. Don't mind that. My daughter wants a cookie. <laughs> and she can't have one because it's almost supper time. See it's really nice. It's got some nice greens and blues and purples. Like I said, you just want to go ahead and just press it down and let it get a good rinse. And I really don't think I'm going to have to rinse it too many times because the water will, it's already coming pretty clear. It's got a little bit of blue left in it, but I'll put it through and rinse it maybe two or three more times. And I'll show you what it'll look like then. So I finished rinsing. And uh, when it was done and the water ran clear, I gave it one final squeeze and then I put it into a salad spinner. I find that that's the easiest way to get excess water out um, without agitating it too much. So that's pretty much it as far as acid dyeing wool goes. Um, I'll probably get you with another video vlog when I spin it up. Maybe I'll give you a little tutorial on how I tail spin my yarn. Alright, see y'all later.